my pals. We are the Good Doctors of Abbey Research. I'm Dr. Kristen. And I'm Dr. Aaron. And you are very welcome to our Season 5, Episode 8 recap of The Handmaid's Tale. Well, recap and rants. Um, <laughs> and honestly, with this one, a lot of questions. Specifically so many about questions. New Bethlehem. Um, I want to know how it got... I have so many. Anyway, moving on. So, yeah. um, before we get started on anything else, want to let you guys know that Larry's atonement confession to June, the one that it happened in two parts, will be the subject of our May Day moment today. May Day moment is the special bonus content we give our Patreons. If you would like to join our Patreon, it is patreon.com forward slash Abby Research. Link on the screen below. Make sure to join us. You get all the past May Day moments. There's also a whole ton of new content coming up um, all about, uh, gosh, so many things. We do more than The Handmaid's Tale, but we are sure you will want to stick around and see what else we're doing. Um, before we launch into Motherland, Erin, how are you with Gilead fatigue? Because normally around this time of the season, we're both like, oh, just end it already. Where are you at with that? Yeah, I, I'm I'm for sure starting to feel it. Um, I told uh, I told Dr. Kristen this morning offline that like I didn't like this episode, but I'm not sure why. Because like when I break down all the parts of it, I'm like, you know, they did a good job with that. Yeah, yeah, no, I really like that scene. I appreciate that dynamic. Um, there's a couple things in this episode that I'm tired of, um, but. And, you know, they've done such a good job of moving the story forward this season in a way that makes sense. Yeah. But I think there was just enough stuff in this episode that happened um, that I was just a little too on the nose for me. I think maybe what I'm finding my fatigue coming from is clearly the show is commenting on the current state of American politics, mm. Im immigration, rising Christian nationalism, assaults on democracy, left, right, and center. Um, and, you know, obviously, folks, I know this is a dystopian future. I'm not expecting sunshine and roses. It's part of the job of the show to be a, a social critique um, but I think it was a little too on the nose. I think it was like the cumulative effect of too much on the nose. And at one point in my notes, I was like, okay, Bruce, we get it. Like you're talking yeah. about America. Democracy is under threat. You know what? I watched the news too. <laughs> yeah. And I think I didn't pick up on that quite as much, although I did laugh at the prevalence of beavers on all the Canada signs when like no one that we know in Canada is beaver uh, crazy and absolutely none of them were carrying a, a Tim Hortons cup and no one was eating Tim bits and so therefore yeah. they are not in Canada if, um, if none of those caravanners had been to Timmy's I mean like Timmy's is where you go before you do things like before you go curling or before you go like it's the place you stop to get like fuel before you go to events so, yeah. like, nobody had a Timmy's cup that I saw prevalently, and I was like, you're not in Canada. I mean, you're not like, Canada. I mean, they were literally in Canada, but, like... You, none of you are you real show, Canadians. Sorry. None of, show me a Tim Hortons cup over uh, 18 signs with beavers on them, please. Yeah. Or a uh, Leafs jersey or something. Like, come on. I know, especially since the Leafs continue to um, live up to the joke Larry made about them earlier this season. Um, God... Bless my Leafs friends. Ugh. It's a rough time for us all. So mm. basically this entire episode is, I think, trying to address our fatigue. For me, if we, the like back and forth of who matters more, Hannah or Nicole, has what I have been tired of since like yeah. Nicole popped on the scene. Um, yeah. And, but... I loved that we got actual eyes on Hannah in this episode. Um, mm -hmm. I love that things are moving. Uh, like, there's a lot that I liked. So let's break it down really yeah. quickly. I'm going to just, I'm going to fly through this recap. Because in terms of, like, plot points, about six things happened. But they just mm -hmm. gave their actors a beautiful chance to, uh, this is, this continues to be Yvonne Strahovski's Emmy reel. Like, she oh just. Oh, my God. 
crushes it. Like, crushes it. Um, and I'm like 99% convinced that that is her actual baby that she gave birth to because she was pumping. And yeah. I mean, you can fake pumping, but you cannot fake a scene where a live baby latches onto a nipple, which is what they showed when she was feeding. And I was like, oh, okay. So they tied this into Yvonne Strahovski actually having a baby. Cool. Great. It was very realistic. I loved it. I loved it. Yeah. Um, but, uh, okay, so we have, let's start with Serena. Serena is in detention because um, Luke turned her in, but also she was an idiot to not accept immunity. Um, all of this is her fault. She calls um, Larry in first and is like, you have to get me out. And Larry's like, you are making a lot of demands for a person who has fucked up a lot. Um, and Zero power. Zero power. And my favorite was he just like looked at her a couple times and was like, do you have an irony deficiency? Like, how do you not so see this? Good. So, so good. So good. So, but she is Serena Waterford and she's going to keep going. So the next person that comes into the, or at one point she meets Mrs. Wheeler. Is that before Larry? I think yeah, that's before Mrs. Wheeler Larry. comes yeah. to collect uh, um, milk. And we learn that the Wheelers are fostering Noah. And Mrs. Wheeler is not a person who should be in charge of children because she's upset that the baby cries all the time. And she's starting the cry it out method at one month. Could I make a international announcement that <laughs> that is way too young to be concerned about your kids self-soothing? Like, like, no, 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 please don't do that. Um, but no. also, gosh, there are so many people that have children that just should not. And Mrs. Wheeler is one of them at this moment. Um, so good good reminder to us that motherhood is complicated and there are good mothers and bad mothers and good mothers are the ones that put the needs of the kids first. That's one of the theses of this show. Um, yep. So that was good. Uh, so yeah, she gets Larry. Larry's like, I can't help you, boo. So sorry. Get like, but eventually it's like, good news, you're going back to the wheelers. And, yeah. and she's like, I can't go back to the wheelers. And he's like, again, you have very little options here. Um, and, and he's, and she's like, what have you done for me? And he's like, I got you a room at the Wheelers. Like, I just, yeah. <laughs> hi. So hi. then the next person in her tour of whatever is June comes by and Serena obviously thinks that she and June are besties since besties. the whole birth situation. Um, and this is a gripe that I've got and Aaron brought this up offline and I have a feeling some of you guys are going to feel the same way because you guys already hated the flashbacks. Um, why did we get the flashbacks of like, they could be, you know, friends. And then June's like, no, I'm never forgiving you. Like, where did, what was last episode? Yeah. Setting it, us up I for, think, not that I think that June should forgive Serena, but no, I thought that the, I mean, I can do a treatise on forgiveness. Like she should forgive her for the power of the, like resentment is corrosive, but she should never be in relationship with Serena. But um, what was last week? Like, why did yeah. you construct the episode the way that you did if we're going to turn around and June's like, all I'm going to tell you is you can only help your kid when you're with your kid. So yeah. I'm a little confused by that. And I'm curious as to where it's going to go because we don't get anything that helps me in the previews of episode nine. Yeah, I think that was part of my fatigue in this episode because, mm -hmm. you know, we, we had some comments from some of our subscriber stroke uh, patrons and specifically Amy, who was like, I didn't, she didn't like the flashbacks in episode Valid. seven because she was like, where did that come from? Like, they were never chummy. And it's hard to remember every single interaction they've had over the course of five years. Um, but I think it was really smart for June to remind Serena in this moment that even if there were times that she thought June was maybe on her side or sympathetic or whatever, June was always planning on escaping. June was always, or getting out, um, or saving Hannah or saving Nicole, all these things. She was, she was never just about 
the goss. No. Um, with Serena. And so, like, I don't know. I, I think I need a little bit more time to think about their relationship in episode seven versus their relationship in episode eight. Um, but it didn't quite jive with me that, um, that June and, you know, maybe it was self-preservation that she was like, I cannot acknowledge any emotional bond. She can't live in a house with, with Luke and Moira because they're slagging her off all the time for like Serena being her best friend and calling her up all the time. So, you know, I, I think what then they wanted us to show, wanted to show us was that Serena's cognitive dissonance um, and lack of understanding where she is in the world was so strong that she, like, imagined a friendship. But that's not what Elizabeth Moss was showing me with her face in episode seven. So that was, that was a little bit shaky for me. But I loved that it gave us the line, you know, I guess I'm a better Christian than you, which was, like, what we talked about for last episode. And I was like, we should be writing for the show. You guys call us whenever you want. Um, we're happy to be there. But yeah, the fact, I mean, I'm not sure it was necessary to give Serena the line, how do you go and live in a house with a woman who's trying to steal your baby and have her ask it earnestly? Um, it's, that one seems like low hanging fruit to me, though I cackled. Uh, but yeah, it, I'm a little bit shaky on on what they're doing with June and Serena and a little bit shaky about what they're doing with Serena full stop because she does go back to the wheelers. June's advice is to be the handmaid, which hilariously, I just reread a hockey romance in which one, the protagonist gets the advice to be the bunny, like to be the puck bunny. Yeah. And so she, was, she was like, be the handmaid. And I was like, oh, be the puck bunny. <laughs> And it was and see, a, a very random reference in my brain, but hilarious to me. I am not as... I am not as upset at the idea of Serena behaving like a handmaid as you are. Because I do not believe they will rape her. Like, that that bit of it is not going to happen. No. Um, yeah. And so, like, I know you said a couple times, like, I really... I just don't want to see Serena as a handmaid. And my honest reaction is I do. Like, I don't want to see okay. her sexually assaulted because... That was rough to see anybody sexually assaulted. I don't wish that on anyone, and I don't believe in revenge. So, however, I am... If we are going for the vague redemption of Serena Waterford, which I think is part of their plan, I think, then what an important step for me is that she embodies some of the bullshit she pulled. Okay. However, if this is all just another rando detour then I'm going to be pissed. But right now I am more bullish on this storyline than you are, which is, and I, and it is entirely just because I, I just like the idea of her having to sit in that room and think about what she's done. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't and, know. Yeah. And I don't know if I'm going to like it in two episodes. I don't know if I'm going to like it in season six, but right now I'm not as, as pissed off by it. Yeah, yeah, and I think for me it's like, I know there are people out there, we get comments on the YouTube from some of them, that really want to see a, a kind of comeuppance for Serena. Um, or some kind of, you know, as Luke called it, justice for the way she's treated people, or, you know, just giving her a sense of what it feels like. Yeah. Um, and I understand that. And I'm not saying, like, I want to see Serena happy. I think my thing is I don't know where they're going to go from okay. this. Fair. Um, and I'm hesitant for it to go on, as you said, for too long. Um, so, like, it, it's a fascinating episode for me because I clearly still don't understand quite how I feel about it. But it's just, like, I'm, like, 70. I'm, like, not quite fully loaded on the episode. You know, sure. I get to, like, the 70% bar, and I'm like, yes, 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 but that 30% um, is there at the at the end. But I do think what was interesting that we learned from this conversation between June and Serena is Serena gives her some of the, like, insider baseball on Larry and says that he has been pitching New Bethlehem from the beginning, which coincides to his uh, confession um, yeah. at... at 
to June later on in the episode. So I thought that was interesting. We still have a lot of questions about New Bethlehem. But uh, I loved that Serena said she doesn't know how he got all this power because I don't know how he got all this power either. But he clearly has a lot of power because he's even like threatening, low-key threatening. Maybe because he's got Nick the henchman next to him saying like, you know, moral something, so whatever it was, moral something was a problem for Commander Putnam too. And that guy like turns around, he's like, I'm so sorry, I didn't mean to upset you. Um, so I don't know if it's because he's like throwing around muscle or what, but I'm glad Serena was like, I'm not quite sure how he got all this power. Again, maybe the answer was they just had to kill Fred. I don't know. Yeah, so speaking of Larry, let's really quick do the tour de force through him. So we find out Larry's quasi-master plan. I'm still not convinced that we know everything. Um, but we do know certainly more than we did at the beginning. Like I said, our May Day moment, we'll be talking way more about his confession and this idea that I deeply believe New Bethlehem is his penance um, mm -hmm. and, what, and what he's doing. I really do need to know where they're going to get the electricity and what island this is. But we'll cover all of that in our Mayday moment. But where it coincides with June is that he is trying very hard to get June to New Bethlehem. Twello is getting is trying very hard for June to stay. And all of this comes down to, guys, I mean, don't like don't hold your breath. This is going to be super shocking. It all goes down to Hannah. So what? I'm like, what? What? So Twello is saying, mean, give us a little... You mean it's been about Hannah this whole time? This whole time. So Twello is saying, give us a little time, we'll get her out. Um, and Larry is like, no, 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 no. You can go be with her and have your whole family be there. And this is where, like, that's the main crux of this. June spends a lot of this episode thinking about Larry's proposition and mm -hmm. my favorite kind of meditation that she did on that was her conversation with Rita, where Rita just kind of said, I'm here, but if I, if my, in a world where my son was still alive, I'd stop at nothing. And yeah. then juxtaposing that with Luke, although I was very glad that Luke finally said, we're never going to be enough for you. Because that's one of the things mm -hmm. we've been saying for seasons now. Like, why mm -hmm. is Nicole not worth staying? What, yeah. what is your thing here? Um... I'm tired of the Luke and June fights, although Same. I completely respect that that is absolutely how this would go down. Um, yeah. I am I am weary of watching neither one of them understand the other person. Yeah. And weary of Luke's shallow masculinity that he's only a dude if he protects her. Um, if, if he protects it just got June. It's just gotten tiring. It's just gotten tiring. Yeah. It has, if he protects June. And I'm like, A, you recognize it's shallow masculinity. B, like, show me that you're working on it. But he's still just like, and you know, this this idea of, of time and how long it, it takes for things to change and how June apparently expects and then gets classified information about secret American operations because she's June. Um, but again, like, both Twello and uh, Larry understand that real change takes time. Yep. Revolutions take a long time. Undoing revolutions take a long time. Um, and June is like, but I have to get my daughter back right now. Yeah. And I, I wrote at one I point, totally I was like, understand. coups are quick, but the fallout is long. The fallout is long. Um, ask us what we've learned about coups on Colonizer's World Tour. So um, many things. So many coups. And, I, I, and I'm not saying I don't understand where June's coming from. I 100% understand. I mean, obviously, I have not birthed a child, but I cannot imagine if, my, if I was separated from my 12-year-old, who I learned was going to become a wife at 12. A child bride. A child bride. Having lived in the, in the society that um, she knows what that looks like, she knows what that feels like, she knows how traumatized it's going to be. June is facing a ticking clock. And I 100% understand her desperation and her panic. And that's what she shows Luke. Um, again, this whole, like, I abandoned her, I abandoned her, I promised her I'd never abandon her. That made me tired because you've already been through this. And also, it was six years ago. I'm still not convinced that Hannah remembers June. 
Yeah, and like... I'm not saying that like six-year-olds don't, but like they have done so much aggressive reprogramming. We already mm -hmm. saw that she's scared of June. Like a normal 12-year-old mm -hmm. who's been separated from her mother, I think tot like would remember. I'm saying I don't think Hannah does. I think we've been set right. up for that. And right. this is all making me nervous. Yeah, I definitely ended the episode very nervous. Yep. Um, Preview June... did not make me feel any better. No. Um, I, I, you know, I looked at my mom and I was like, this is not this, you know, paraphrasing uh, bar talk from Anastasia. This will only end in tears. Correct. Um, I was like, this is not like I felt and I know we were supposed to feel like super uncomfortable with Moira and Luke and June, like jumping up and down. They're going to get Hannah. They're going to get Hannah. And like, I understand that they're clinging to any hope that they can. But the pragmatist in me was like, you don't have her back yet, kids. Come on now. You've been living in this world. Yeah. Um, I just... I So the, cy the cynic in me was a little too cynical for some parts I, of this episode. But it's like this operation is something's going to go pear-shaped, y'all. You know it. We have a whole other season left. Also, Hannah is a protagonist in the Testaments. At, like, So I don't know what we're doing with that. Um, but I will say, I want to know immediately who was filming Hannah and why did Hannah stop? Like, did she recognize that person? Yeah. Was it the noise? Like, the, like, clanging of the, you know, it sounded like somebody dropped a tool or something? Like, why yeah. did she turn Why did and she look? stop? Why did she stop? Um, yeah. So many questions. Um, so many questions. I think, though, I do want to say a couple things on Maine about Larry really quick before we kind of dive yeah. into his penance. Um Yeah. I really, really loved the walk that they took where he said I had to use religious nut jobs as a delivery system. Yeah. Um, and I have never, ever thought that he theologically believed anything that the rest of them did. No, no. So I appreciated that. But it's also like, I think a lot, as, as he said that, I hit pause on the episode and I watched it this morning. So we're fresh here, guys. Um, I watched it this morning and I sat here and I was just like, how many... Like, I mean, as, as everything does, it reminds me of Hamilton. But, like, Hamilton had to get in bed with Jefferson. Yeah. And the line in the musical is, you know, if he could either support Burr or Aaron Burr or Thomas Jefferson in the 1800 election, which is factual. And the line in the musical is, you know, I have argued with Jefferson constantly. I've never agreed with him once. But I know what he stands for, and I don't know what Burr stands for, so I'm going to choose Jefferson. And Hamilton changes the course of history by getting in bed with somebody he doesn't agree with at all, because at least he knows what he's getting. And so much of, I like, I would love to go back and get season one of The Handmaid's Tale through Larry's eyes, and, like, yeah. show me the compromises he had to make. Show me the moment where he went, well, fuck. Like, show me... What have I done? Yeah. Like, oh, shit. And, like, I saved humanity... We, you know, I had to save it from capricious capitalism, which ironically I'm doing a talk on this Saturday. So that felt a little on the nose. Um, <laughs> I was like, just throw in Protestant work ethic. Why don't you lair? And then we could have been talking the same language. Um, I know. But his response, it was to overthrow the government and to start over. And my response is everybody just needs to learn to sleep more, which I think mine is more tenable. And it definitely, definitely results in less sexual assault. So I, I think my idea wins. Um, I'm just going to say I, I'm for door number two on this one. So, no, sorry, Lair. But I find it like I'd love to know what his full back. Like he's an economist. We know that. But like were you, where did you start in your environmentalism journey? Like when yeah. did you become an eco-terrorist essentially? Were you ever like part of Greenpeace? Like what, where's your journey here? And at what point did yeah. you decide that Gilead is who you threw your hat in with, boy? Like, yeah. And I don't, yeah, I doubt we, we're ever going to get those questions. It'll just be the fanfic in my mind. But that's what I want to focus on. And I know they will focus other places. So. Yeah. And we had a comment from uh, our subscriber, Venus, on uh, episode seven saying, like, you know, she wants to read uh, Larry's, like, early writings. Yes, I saw that. Like, I totally agree, Venus. Yep. Was totally and Serena's. Agree. Which she also Serena's, said. I'd love to read yeah. Serena's book. Yeah. And, you know, while you were talking talking through that last bit there about um, Larry and, you know, these philosophical ideas that, that are interesting to us, I think I realized that, like, 
some of my Gilead fatigue comes from when they continuously feel like the show, they need to remind us how bad Gilead is or how corrupt the system is. Okay, I can see that. That's a good point. It's like, okay, we've been here before. We've established okay, this I, now. Can we have new conversations? Okay, I see that. I see that. Yeah. So for me, yeah. I think it's it's kind of, and, I, and I, it took me, see y'all, I, I just need a little bit more time to process, but I love processing with my bestie and that's what we do best. So we're here and I've processed and I realized what I didn't like about this episode. It's that I feel like there was too much of retrodden ground in it. Completely um, valid. You know, June and Luke fighting because they fundamentally don't understand each other. We've been here before. We've been here before a lot. Um, reminders of Gilead being shit. We know Gilead is shit. Um, and I think I'm going to put into that classification, um, references to contemporary American political discourse. Yeah, um, I'm ignoring because, those a lot easier than you. And it's entirely because yeah. probably I don't watch any news at all. And you are the way I, I know what's happening in the world. But I, like, I appreciate that, that addition. I think that I think that's the difference for the two of us because yeah. MSNBC is on a lot in my house, um, and I just visually process it a lot more than you do. Um, yep. And like, I just found myself in my head like, I get it, I get it. Canada's turning into what America is now: anti-immigrant sentiment, rising nationalism. I get it. Like Larry, it and it was too many times throughout the episode. And then okay. Larry came in and was like, "Well, the problem with the biggest threat to our regime is persisting on these democratic values." And then when Larry's talking to June later, he references it again and like, "Well, you're just obsessed with like democracy." Um, and so That's for, fair. I think that I'm yeah. gonna I think that I'm gonna classify it in in that because they did a lot of that work when they showed. And maybe they need to remind people. I don't know. You and I generally don't need reminded of things as much as, as other consumers of information or art do. So let me totally let me fair. pause. We very rarely need reminders of giant themes. We always need reminders of details. We forget Correct. details. So all let me time. but yeah. All the time. Yeah. That is an appropriate adjustment to my my statement. Yes. We rarely need reminders of giant themes. And this was a theme they tackled a lot in all of the flashbacks in like seasons one, two, and probably three to the before times before Gilead. So yeah. like, I know, I know how we got to Gilead. So what are you telling me? Canada's going to get there eventually too. Like, like what, what are you telling me with this okay. aside from having a caravan of people screaming at June and Luke and, and okay. Moira and like, like I can see so that's yeah, yeah I can that's see kind of where I'm like yep like where is where is that storyline going so we'll see yeah. I'm sure it's going somewhere because they're continuously picking it up um and hopefully the show is past picking things up for several episodes and then dropping it into the ether um but yeah I I think there was a lot I liked about this episode there was some crackerjack writing uh, Larry was the strongest point, as per usual. Bradley Whitford is just acting the shit out of this season. Um, and it moved things forward. You know, we're clearly coming to maybe episodes 9 and 10 are going to be about this operation to get Hannah out. I don't know. I mean, I, under I understand June is powerful, but like... What are I you going like to go after all the other children of American citizens in Gilead? Like. I know. Where does it end? I would like to pose a question to our to our viewers. What I would love Stay. now is in the comments, I want your best theory as to what the hell was happening in Nick's head when Larry said you can have both women you love yeah. in one place. So give us give us that because he is still a mystery and I'm cool with that. Mystery. I'm cool with Nick being a mystery. Um, uh -huh. But like, are we saying he actually loves Rose? Is he in his brain saying, I'm having a child with a woman I don't love after I was forced to have a child with a woman I do love and then you took my baby? Like, what is happening in Nick's brain? Tell us. Tell us. Yeah. Tell us what's going um, on with eyebrows. Um, and then I would also love to know um, your kind of, if you have an idea as to 
like, do you think, do you agree with Dr. Aaron that they're saying that Canada can become Gilead? Because I don't know if that's what they're saying, but I don't know what they are. So give us your theories, guys. We love hearing what you think about the episode. So those are my two main questions for you this time. Yeah, and I think that's a great uh, way to, to wrap up this episode discussion for now. Um, because I, I like that they finally gave us insight into Larry. Mm. We've been asking for it. Appreciate acquiescing to our requests, even though you filmed Thanks, Bruce. this season probably two years ago. Thanks, Bruce. Um, appreciate appreciate y'all. Um, but I would eventually <sighs> like the insight into Nick, but I can do without it for the rest of this season because Correct. I like I like I like the dynamic between uh, Nick and Larry. Um, I, Larry was like, "I'm grooming him, not in a sexual way." I Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. But like, he thinks he's grooming him, but Nick is like, Nick is always a step ahead or like big picture or playing lots of angles. We don't know what Nick's doing. And I'm excited by that. Um, and I don't tell me Bruce, if you're listening, don't tell me about Nick until next season. Um, but yeah, I love that. And I think that's, we'll, we'll get to in our mayday moment, all that, all that was revealed about, uh, Commander Lawrence, but I'm glad that they gave us some and not all of it. It was a good tease. Um, and you know, plans are in motion, y'all. And like, this is what I was explaining this to somebody like what frustrated me so much about seasons three and four is that I had seen them do one and two. Like I knew they could do masterful storytelling. I knew that they could do really tightly knit stories and I knew they could do and then three and four really just felt like spinning wheels. And yeah. it I didn't know what happened to this show that I thought was so tight in one. Loosened a little bit in two, but like you're creating your own new source material. So like that was to be expected. But now we're back to like the tightness of like middle of one to middle of two. And I trust them to tell me a story I didn't a couple seasons ago. I wasn't sure what they yeah. were doing. I will always yeah. refer to the milk truck, but they're back. And I'm super excited to see what's happening um, because I have no concept of how they're tying this to the Testaments, but I'm on board for it. Like no concept, but I'm on board. Yes, they they have earned back our trust in they these certainly eight have. episodes. Um, they always ratchet up for a big finale. We've got the penultimate coming uh this week as we're recording and next week to the youtube um it's uh it looks like a lot i wrote down the words fighting bloodshed and screaming so a penultimate episode for the handmaid's for tale. the ages well hug standard yeah and they love a big se- they love a big penultimate so Join us over on the Patreon, everybody. Once again, the link is below to hear what we think about Larry's penance, if we think it's worth it, um, where our theory on where New Bethlehem is. Um, So come and join us for there. And if it's near Canada, I'm not moving unless there's a Timmy's. And if it's near Philly, I'm not moving unless there's a Wawa. So I'm going to need you to show me any something besides multi-million dollar homes that appeared out of nowhere so just would really love would really like did you hire chip and jojo like what is the vision here um <laughs> hgtv and jojo would, had, like yeah chip and jojo would 100 percent have survived and be like in gilead yeah yeah um yeah they are very HGTV of, gilead. hgtv of gilead what is going on so we'll see you guys over on the Patreon, and then next week for our discussion of episode nine. Bye. Bye, everybody.